and carry on. Okay, great. Okay. So, uh, so welcome back, everybody. Uh, I won't go through that whole explanation again, but for those who are joining us who are new, we, we're talking about the fundamental question, what should your video blog be about? And um, what I have done is gone ahead and showed everyone a couple of options if they're looking for ideas. One is, of course, they're welcome to angle on over to the CJ website, ibmcj.com. And there are a whole bunch of assignments right on the home page, subjects that you might want to share an opinion about. Um, we've also got assignments. The most common form of uh, blog, as I was saying, is what we call a diary blog. And we have gone over and we're looking at some examples of those. Uh, a diary blog is one where somebody basically sets up the camera and they talk into it for about a minute or two and they express their opinions. And um, and these are great, they're easy to do, and a lot of times you'll find that you have strong opinions about news, about um, about anything. So one of the ones we had just looked at a couple of examples, one of course was uh, Baby Shetty, who's a very well-known doctor, who had done a video blog uh, for, our, uh, for our upcoming show, actually, talking about the challenges to healthcare. So that's one where you could, anyone could easily do a similar blog, they could do a video about a healthcare challenge that they faced, uh, they could talk about what they think are the problems, basically rebut his point. Um, we have looked at another blog that had been done by one of our CJs, Afiche, uh, and they're all on this playlist, of course, so I'll put that link in for you, um, who had basically talked about how he had witnessed uh, an accident uh, near his office, a road accident, and, um, and he actually took us to the scene of the accident, which he's showing us now, and, um, and he talked about how he felt that people uh, he felt people should make more of an effort to help the victims at the scene of an accident. Uh, we had another uh, very powerful video blog by a woman who is a survivor of an acid attack, and she spoke up and shared her views when the Supreme Court passed acid regulation. And basically, it was very intense because it was very personal. And she spoke about the challenges of being a survivor, um, how difficult it is to survive such extraordinary violence. So those are all examples of blogs that anyone can do. So um, you know, if you happen to spot something that you think is not correct, whether it's someone being bullied, whether it's a service that isn't working, whether it's an unsafe pedestrian crossing. So that's another campaign that we had recently done. Um, and we had asked people to send us videos of unsafe, um, just lack of safety in their neighborhoods. So I'm opening up another video now, uh, and this is a uh, this is actually, uh, you can't hear the audio, but basically what this CJ had done is he filmed a really unsafe uh, pedestrian crossing. And he took us all out there and he talked about why it was incredibly unsafe and why he felt something needed to be done about it. And um, in fact, if you watch this video, what's, uh, what's really interesting is that um, halfway through the video, people do in fact try to cross this incredibly bus busy road like they're doing right now. And a cyclist actually, um, there's actually an accident. So. Um, so clearly, I mean, his point is illustrated that this is an incredibly unsafe crossing. So, um, so yeah. So those are examples of things that you can do um, in the basically in the environment all around, um, and they make for great uh, subjects. And um, and those are diary blogs. So um, so those are basically you talking over, and there's a single shot. Now, there are. Um, there are more complicated ways to do this. Um, there are also um, story videos, and that's when um, that's if you want to explore getting different variety of shots or doing a story that's more similar to the type of story that you might see on um, on TV. And that's um, that's when you decide, okay, I have a, a broader story to tell, and you can con collect in addition to material of yourself or other people talking. You can also collect um, material about, like, let's say you wanted to do a broader story about lack of pedestrian safety in your neighborhood. So then you could take your mobile phone, you could film a couple of different people talking about that, and um, you could also film one or two unsafe crossings on that phone. And, um, and there are ways to edit that content together using programs like iMovie or YouTube Video Editor. That's for people who are a little more familiar with video editing and or who might want to tell stories in that way. But for many people, what is the most straightforward and the most easy to do is to just do video blogs. And I think you'll realize once you start doing them that there are so many things to take videos of. So, um, 
So those are examples, and um, I know we talked about a couple pretty serious examples, but we also put out assignments like, what are you reading? Send us a movie or a book review. So your video blog could be something as simple as, I saw this movie, here I am outside the theater, here's what I loved about it, and here's what I hated about it. And, um, and that kind of thing is also really popular, and you know you can share that with your friends, and they can add their own. So, so those are all examples, and, um, and that's, that addresses the question of, what should people be blogging about? Does that um, does that help? Are we all um, pretty clear on? Does anyone have any questions um, on content and on what how to find subjects for a video blog? You can type them in the side if you do. Okay. Are we all good? Everyone nods, so I know everyone is also still awake. I can see you over there. Okay. All right. I see people smiling. Okay, good. All right. So we'll move on from that rather lengthy introduction. Um, so the first subject was content. Content is the most important thing. After that, a lot of people have questions about how they should actually be using their mobile phone in order to get the most out of it. Oh, so someone's asking on the side, we limit ourselves to one narrow topic. Um, that's Vanilla Krishna. Okay. So, you know, Vanilla, what I have found, and I say, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, uh, what I have seen is that usually video blogs are best when they're about a minute long. So if you're doing one, one, if it's a blog um, and it's a diary blog, then what works best is to choose one subject and to explore that fully. You can do several different blogs or you could even do a blog playlist. So one of the great things about YouTube is you can create these playlists. And let's say you want to get different viewpoints on a particular subject. And you know people who have very different views. So you could potentially do one minute long video blogs getting different viewpoints and put them all in a playlist that way. Um, that's one way to explore more views within a subject. Um, with that, does that address your question or? Yeah? Okay, cool. So, um, good, okay. So you can do more than one. Um, I think it's best in one blog to keep it to one subject. Um, Pratiksha is saying, so you want us to give you contradicting opinions about one thing. You know, Pratiksha, this is your decision. So I think it depends on, for example, in the, exam in the ones that I just showed, um, people didn't necessarily contradict themselves. So some people will say, okay, this is my diary. I have one view, and I want to express that view, and that's it. If you want to explore different opinions, like let's say you take an issue that's in the news. Um, for example, we had talked about um, something like prejudice against you know, different communities within India. Um, that's a subject that was in the news a lot, and we had done a hangout on it. Now, you could, if you wanted to get different views on that, you could go and take video blogs of one or two different people and collect them. Uh, and that's what, another aspect of doing it. So you can do your view. You can also bring in other people's views if you'd like to explore contradictions. Um, and that would involve doing two or three videos. Okay, so Sukanya is saying, so we have to collect views from other people, right, on a specific issue. Yes, yes, that's, um, that is, so for the first blog that you do, since you're doing it for the first time, it might be easiest for you to go out, choose one subject and one person, and take one video blog. And then depending on how satisfied you are with that, if you want to do more, or if you think that you would like to get in these contradicting views, then you can start to add more to that. Um, but on the first one, it might be best to focus on one voice. Um, Swathi is asking, if we are also shooting the story that we are covering in the video blog, should we follow a certain ration for the time we show ourselves narrating and the time we show the incident? Oh, wow. OK, so that's an interesting one. Um, you want to initially begin with yourself, and you could start with uh, you know, a, a shot of yourself explaining why, what the incident is, and then you can demonstrate the, the incident, so, um, and, then, and then perhaps tie it together at the end. So if you're going to do both, then I would say open and close with yourself talking. And then in the middle, you can add the information about the incident. That can be if you have photos about an incident or an, an event that you want, to, you want to cover, you can put those in the middle. So it's, I don't think there's an ideal ra uh, ratio, but I think for people who are watching, it helps if they know 
from the beginning, if they get a little explanation as to why you're why you're doing this and why you want them to watch. Uh, okay, so oh, excellent. Okay, so I'm going through these questions one by one. Um, Aparna is saying kind of the shorter the better, like very precise and succinct. And yes, Aparna, the answer is I think precise and succinct is best. Think about it um, from your perspective. If you are watching a video like this, what would make you want to watch it? What would make it interesting? Um, if it's someone you know, if it's an expert, if they're saying something controversial that you want to argue with. So, you know, keep it, I think keep it, uh, keep it short and keep it to the point. Absolutely. Um, ideal length. Okay. So... Ideal length, if it's a diary blog, I would say around one minute. If you are doing what Atisha had done and you're actually going outside and you're demonstrating, let's say you're saying, okay, this is like, um, you know, an unsafe area in my neighborhood. Or let's, let's say you're going out and you're saying, this is, you know, let's say you decide to do a short interview. Like this is, you know, a newspaper vendor who stops by my neighborhood every day and he does really interesting stuff and, you know, here's a day in his life. So, um, so if you are bringing in other people or other incidents, then you can take it to two minutes. If you're doing a straightforward diary blog, which is the first example I showed you, so like the Baby Shetty blog, like Pragya's blog, then it's best to keep it to about a minute. Um, and that, again, keep it as succinct as possible. Does that help? And I realize what I'm doing here is I'm giving a lot of different options for types of videos. And I hope that's okay with you guys. The idea here is that based upon the examples that we've shown and the discussion we've had, you can decide on a subject and a way to explore that subject that you know, is meaningful to you. So you can either do it as a as one video that's a minute long. You can do it as a conversation with somebody exploring their views that's two minutes long. Uh, you can do that co collecting contradictory views from other people. And each view could be about a minute. You could narrate an incident. So there are a lot of different things that you can do. Um, initially, what a lot of people find easiest is just to do a simple video blog, a diary blog, for about a minute. So you can initially start, especially if it's your first time doing this, you can start with a diary blog and say, okay, I'm going to do a minute-long video on any subject. Okay, does that sound good? Do we have other questions about um, about the content? Or are we good to move? Okay, cool. So the, uh, okay, can a second person who has, ah, here's a question for Can a second person who has faced the problem or the issue we talk about be involved in a blog? Yes, absolutely. So, uh, so let's say you are having a problem and someone else you know is facing the same issue, then you can totally invite them into the conversation. So you can have a conversation with them, they can be sitting next to you, you can do it um, in such a way that you go and you both talk about it and then you talk about it at the scene of the issue. So then you can demonstrate in the background, okay, this is what's happening and this is why it's a problem. Uh, so yeah, you can definitely involve another person. Um, okay. Further questions? Are we good? OK, so if you have other questions about that, um, you're welcome to just continue to think about them. And, um, and now I'm going to move into questions that people have, technical questions. Um, and this is very um, basic questions of how to use your mobile phone camera, because most of us are on a mobile phone, um, in such a way that you really get the most out of it. And I'll start by saying that, you know, again, the content is the key thing, but a few tips and things that we found that help make it easier. Uh, one is that when you start filming your video blog, you want to take your mobile phone. So most of us, you know, we're used to using our mobile phone, um, you know, like, like this, so to speak. And you want to just make sure that you turn it horizontal. And the reason for that is because you will, it's a lot easier to adapt that image to the screen later on. So that's one quick and easy initial tip. Uh, the other is some phones have a zoom feature. Um, it's usually better to get close to the subject rather than use the zoom. So, um, so again, hold the phone horizontal and get close rather than use the zoom. Uh, and then we can also do... Um,
then we can also do a, uh, if you're showing an incident, as somebody else had asked, then what works really well is for um, you to take a wider picture or sh uh, just show that incident. So um, make sure you show people where you are and what's happening. That could mean that you take the phone and initially what you do is you can start talking and then you can sort of show people. So like go for a little, you know, and say, okay, this is the area we're in, this is what's happening, and give them a sense of where you are and what you're seeing around you. Uh, give them a sense of the environment. And then uh, in addition to that, um, another type of... Um, what the other, another thing that people really like to see is, is um, they like to see people interacting with each other. So if you're talking about an incident or an event, you can show people. Like in the example that I showed you of the unsafe pedestrian crossing, what was really interesting is that you actually saw people trying to cross that road. So, um, and and the, the person who had taken that actually showed that happening. So, um, so that's, you know, another bit of advice on how you can frame. Um, in terms of sound, I think sound is a big challenge. Um, you can speak directly into your, like keep your, ideally if you are speaking, you want it to be closer to you rather than further away. Uh, ideally avoid an environment where there's a lot of background noise. Uh, if you're inside a room, uh, hard surfaces often echo, so you'll want to be in a place perhaps with um, one of the, um, one bit of advice that I've heard that works is, you know, if you're choosing a room, ideally a smaller room and with soft surfaces like, you know, with some curtains or with carpeting. Um, otherwise, you can just set that up and, uh, and go for it. So again, um, just the basic advice would be do it in daylight uh, and with as little background noise as possible in order to get the best quality. Uh, any, any questions on that? And hold the phone horizontally. So any questions about that? And, and get in close if you can. Thoughts, questions on that? Has, have, have you guys tried to, I know we have one guy with us who has now dropped off who had tried to do this, but have people here tried to, have you used your phones to make videos before? Most people have, right? I would imagine. Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing people nodding. Okay. So a lot of this is pretty familiar. Yeah, I mean, you know how it works. I think some of these are like bits of advice that can help you get slightly more out of the video. Um, if you're doing a diary blog and you're just filming someone talking, then make sure you keep that phone pretty steady throughout. So that could mean just propping your elbows on something, um, propping the phone itself on like a book or, you know, some sort of stand uh, is often really helpful because you don't want it to be shaking around. Okay. Uh, so that's that. I think those were the that was the bulk of what I was thinking we could talk about. So now you have a rough idea. Okay, these are the sort of things we can do, and these are, you know, and here are some technical advice. And I think we can send perhaps Anshul afterwards, since I know I've said a lot. Maybe we can send out some of this material as well, so people can um, can refer to it afterwards. Would that would that be helpful? So I can send out the links and just some of those technical tips. Does that sound good? You all can no. Other questions? So does anyone have an idea already or in terms of what they might want to work on for the first video that they're going to make during the course?
Like I, I'm not, you know, I don't think that you need to do that. So long as your your video is complete in and of itself. Other questions? I uh, okay, sounds good. Um, they're actually, it's really interesting. I mean, if you guys take a look and you Google, um, you know, mobile phone um, videos, you'll find that actually in many parts of the world, um, professional journalists are now producing whole. Um, packages, uh, what we call packages anyway, but whole stories on using just mobile phones. And um, and they're doing a lot of interesting stuff. So that might also give you some ideas. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff that people can do. Uh, and, and once you get started, I think you'll also find that if you get bored of just doing basic um, video diary blogs, you can kind of juice it up a bit by trying to get more than one, inviting in people for conversations, doing some editing in YouTube. That's all you know, value added. Okay. Was there anything else, Anshul, that you wanted us to cover or that you think we should? Ah, excellent. Okay. Can the format of creating blogs be broken into specific steps? Uh, yes. Okay. So here's how I would say it. Step one, decide what you want your blog to be about. Step two, decide how many people are going to be in your blog. Is it just going to be you? Will it be another person? Will it be you and a friend? Step three, decide where and when you're going to film it, ideally outdoors during the day, but in a place with low noise. Step four would be record the video. You might have to give it a couple tries and, you know, see how it turns out. Uh, and so Glenia is saying, can we use a digital camera and do a video blog? Yes, absolutely. You can use, um, in fact, people have used all different kinds of tools. So I have talked a lot about a mobile phone just because that's what we have and it's easiest. Um, but that said, people can also do a video blog using the webcam in their computer. So what we're using right now, um, you guys can use, and it's, I mean, the benefit of that is that it's very steady. So, um, so no issues there. Um, if you have a digital camera that you want to use that shoots video, by all means, go ahead. That's great. Um, digital cameras often get really good, um, good quality of image and sound, so at least of image for sure. So yeah, feel free. Other thoughts? Other questions? I'm sure were those steps clear enough, do you think? Or did you want to get more granular about those? Sounds good? Can we okay, so Diksha's asking, can we cover various diverse issues or is there any particular genre? You can choose any subject that you want to focus on. I, I would say there's no, um, that's a very broad brief, I realize. Um, but yeah, anything that moves you, honestly. Um, any subject that you think needs to be spoken about. So um, I gave the example earlier of you know doing a book review or a movie review in the form of a video blog. That's also something you can do. Um, and those can also be quite fun. So yeah, you can do that. Um, you can do anything that you, you know, you, or you're also welcome to check out the site, look at the assignments and the subjects that we're covering. And if there's one that speaks to you particularly, you're welcome to, to get in on that. Is it ideal to have a script before the Hangout? Uh, yes. I, I think that's a good idea. So if not an exact word-for-word -word script, then you probably want to know what you're going to say. So step one after deciding, step one is part of deciding what subject um, to cover. And, um, and step two, of course, was deciding how many people are going to be in it. So as you're doing that, you want to you want to think about, you don't need to write down the script, perhaps. I mean, it's better if people don't read. But perhaps rehearse it once, either on your own or with the other people who are going to be in it. And make sure that people feel comfortable, that you kind of know what's going to be said. Um, and of course, you're, you're welcome to, to do more than one take. I mean, you can, you can do one, two, or three. But it is usually a good idea at least to write down and think about beforehand what you want to say. Other questions? All right, good. Should we um, should we look at wrapping up? So I think I think we are good, Anika. Uh, I don't see any other questions coming in from the people who are watching it live. Mm -hmm. I think we've uh, covered most of the topics and otherwise maybe uh, 
you know you can just share your Twitter handle with the oh, yeah. uh, you know mm -hmm. interns. They can ask you the questions directly over Twitter. Yeah, so I am at uh, Digital Anika. I've just put that Twitter handle on the side also for you guys. Um, please, please feel free to reach out and ask questions on that handle. Um, you can also email me, and I'm putting that email address on the side as well. Um, I'm sure you can feel free to share this with the, with the other interns. Um, and if you have questions as you're preparing, if you just you know are not sure whether your idea is working out, you can please feel free to ask at any time how, um, and I'm, I'm happy to look at it or have someone from our team here also take a look at it. Are you guys all on Twitter? Yes? Nodding? Shaking? Ah, some people are, some people aren't. Okay. Um, but a yeah. really good reason to join uh, Twitter now. It's a great reason to join Twitter, actually. It's a great way to get in touch with people. Um, okay, great. That's, that's all I can think of. Um, I'm sure people will have questions. And I just realized that was a lot of content and material, so I will write down some of it and share that. So, you know, you'll, you'll all have that available. OK. Great. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Anika, for joining us and all the interns who were able to make it. Uh, the good thing is that we have almost 10 other viewers, so that covers pretty much all the other interns. Uh, oh, great. Okay. Part of. Yeah, so everybody was watching the, the, the video. Uh, we're still going to share it with, with the entire group, so the video <laughs> is going to be available throughout. If you yeah. guys have any questions, we'll send you the email of, uh, of Anika. You can tweet to her at Digital Anika, and um, we'll do another Hangout with a smaller group really soon. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And in fact, I'm sure maybe you could just put all of us on one email, do you think? So people can maybe share yeah. ideas and questions, um, and I'm, I can be on that too. Um, yes, yeah, so I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to uh, copy everyone in one thread and, and start a conversation. So if there are any questions, people can ask you directly. Yeah, perfect. OK. Sounds great. Thank you so much, you guys. I'm really excited. When Anshul and I talked about this, we were really excited. So really excited to see people's video projects. And I, I really hope you have fun with them. I mean, it should be a fun exercise. And it's a great tool. People love watching videos, so yeah. Great. OK. All right. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you on the next time. Thanks, time everyone. Out. See you soon.